in the wrong place and everything and everything's a bit of a mess and I knew I'd forgotten something. I forgot to change the teams. Oh god, right guys, bear with me one moment. Oh god, how embarrassing. Um, give me a moment here guys, I'm having a bit of a nightmare this afternoon. This evening, I should say. Um, my webcam is really high up. Oh, I just don't know what's going on. Is that better on the webcam? Yeah, give me a moment and we'll sort these teams out, guys. Um, 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 stream overlays. Oh shit, a new overlays. Uh, scoreboard open. Cross my fingers and hope that I've got both of these teams on the scoreboard already. And um, there's AT Gaming, that was easy enough. For some sad reason, I really don't think I've got Darkstar here. Oh god. Oh gold, oh gold. It's probably the most unprofessional uh, opening I've had in a long, long time. So, I mean, I've been doing really well lately. Just today, it's it's apparently fallen to absolute pieces. A um, couple more moments as uh, we drag Darkstar over here. We size it to 250, 250. Scale, um, move into position, kind of center it. Uh, now figure out where the flip this one is to get rid of it. Change the score to 0-0. Zero, zero. Control S, export, and I think we're ready to get into this. No, no, what have I just done? I've not, oh god, what have I just closed? I've got no idea what I've just done. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's try this again. <laughs> what am I doing? Okay. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How is everyone doing? Welcome to the SC2 Improved Team League. I am Wardy, and today we're going to be watching AT Gaming versus Team Darkstar. AT Gaming, the Season 2 champions of the SC2 ITL, back in an action here for Season 3. Their first player up is going to be Optimus, the player who all killed in the Grand Finals of our second season against Vegas Squadron, and we'll see if he's still looking in shape and on form today as he starts off against Team Darkstar, the all-Swedish underdog team who uh, quite often do pull off a couple of upsets, um, but never really seem to, you know, they always take a few maps and more maps than people expect, but they never seem to get over the final hurdle and, you know, really win the matches. They got demoted last season, they fought their way back through the invite-only qualifier and made it back through uh, into the first division. So guys, without any further ado, let's get into our game. A few minutes late starting because I had an absolute nightmare. Um, definitely did not just wake up approximately, um, you know, 10 minutes ago or something. Um, man, I was just watching WCSEU in bed and the next thing I know I wake up and like two players have been knocked out or something and oh god, it was like a total best of three and a bit later. Oh no, it wasn't good at all. Anyways, guys, in the upper left-hand corner, the red Terran player from AT Game to start things off tonight, it's Optimus. Let's hope they both show up, says Foster. Well, actually tonight I was the only one that didn't show up. If you guys tuned in yesterday, we actually had to cancel the stream, we were live and everything, we had the viewers rising on up, everyone was tuning in, everyone was getting ready for some CTITL, and it got into this position where we actually had to cancel the stream. In the lower right hand corner, Darkstar's Avocado here, as both players have gases down and are starting to go into factories here. Avocado with a later factory, uh, has a command center already on the way, and now a reactor building as well, whereas we've already got the uh, factory finished over here for Optimus, he started with a gas first, which has allowed him to tech up a lot faster here. He's got a starboard on the way right now, and he's going to be hoping him for a kind of marine hellion elevator kind of play to start off. So Avocado, he's going to have a similar number of units out. He's going to have the defender's advantage, which will help him out a little bit as well. We'll see if it's going to be enough for him here um, in this match, in this first map of this best of seven. Starport on the way down as well. And uh, Avocado just getting set up. And they're pretty similar uh, set of buildings to his opponent. He's going to have uh, double Hellions on the way from this reactor. And this is going to be really nice. I always feel that... Um, was this a Reaper opening? Is that why there's Herd Marines? How the fuck did we see two Reapers die? What the fuck did I miss in the start of this game? Am I an idiot? Oh my god, what an embarrassing start. What truly embarrassing start. Two Hellions about to pop out here in the first Marine for Avocado. Um, he's going to start a Medivac as well. I mean, there is three, I mean, three Hellions and six Marines. 
I mean, with four Hellions, you're pretty much getting to the point where you're going to be okay. So, this should end up being a fairly even trade here. Optimus is going into a mine now, back at home, from his factory, as well as his own reactor on a barracks. Um, just going to drop off here and start uh, working away at this uh, supply depot and uh, seeing what kind of damage he can get done. If you can pick up a supply depot or two, that'd be great, and uh, especially if he picks off this one and the one around the other side, which he is starting to work on now. I mean, he's at the bottom of this ramp here, a position which his opponent can't really fall back, uh, come down and attack into. Uh, simply because there's such a good concave of units down here. Nice little pick there for Optimus on the high, um, from the low ground. He just lose one Hellion though. Uh, but he still just sits at the bottom of this ramp and uh, if Avicola tries to run down here, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. As um, a back at home, Optimus is starting up his own command center. So he's going to try and catch up in SEVs. I mean, Avocado already actually pretty decent, heavily supply blocked here from losing these two uh, supply depots. So Optimus in a nice little position. I mean, he's got the map control here. He's, uh, you know, he's forcing his opponent to stay back. And well, we may see uh, him try and come. We may see Avocado try and come down the map. Then SCV is very, very brave there. As uh, only a single Marine falling in that little attack there. Um, Avocado losing a lot of mining time on these five SCVs, and uh, you know, considering that's kind of minus five SCVs, that pretty much puts Optimus ahead in terms of workers mining, and uh, that means we're probably going to be pretty even overall once this orbital command does finish up. So, um, so yeah, Optimus is um, just kind of sitting around here, and uh, he's actually even got a mine now, which he's going to try and add on. But uh, we're going to see, uh, you know, Avocado trying to go for a little bit of a uh, way around this. He's actually just going to drop on the low ground. He's going to come in from two different directions to try and clean this up. The mine could be absolutely crucial here. The Hellions don't really do all the much from Optimus. Oh, a huge mine hit actually. He takes down a Hellion and gets a pretty decent splash as well. And, um, well, Avocado breaks out here. Optimus is going to head back home. Raven's on the way for both players. Looking as though with two factories here for Optimus, it's going to be mech from him. Still yet to really see from Avocado. It looks as though it will be mech, though. I mean, with the Raven out, it's very rare you'd see a bio follow-up from this. So, he's just missing a second factory as Optimus actually heads into Blue Flame already. Now, Optimus is going to drop off here. Doesn't quite get an SCV, but a nice little way to keep active on the map and keep his opponent thinking about how what he has to do to be, uh, you know, to not take any further damage here. As uh, the medevac does uh, just sit over to the right hand side now, as a ton of Hellions are coming across for Optimus. So, I mean, what are the Hellion numbers looking like? It's, at, it's 10 to 11, so it's pretty even altogether. And of course, Avocado with a one Hellion advantage and this uh, kind of high ground advantage, uh, and you know, pre split concave, etc., etc., he's going to be able to win any kind of fight pretty easily. However, drops starting to come into the main base, and this will force a few of these Hellions to come in. In fact, all of the Hellions are on the way in. A few of them now splitting back down, a scanning coming in to see what's over there. And this is actually a big commitment to the main base from Avocado as these Hellions from Optimus look to try and run in here. Not quite able to. Blue Flame going to finish very soon for Optimus, and that will give him a pretty decent advantage to take on the Hellions of his opponent. And a really weird scenario at the start of this game is, oh no, now Avocado kind of runs into the Hellions of Optimus. Optimus is not quite ready to fight, though, and taking a lot of free damage on these. And uh, Sorry, Optimus is not quite ready to fight. Fallen back there with those uh, first few Hellions, and uh, Avocado not really able to achieve all too much. Sending out a medevac this time, he actually will drop this in his opponent's base instead of just uh, coming around for the flank. And um, as Blue Flame's finished, I mean, Optimus, I guess he doesn't really quite have enough to come in and, uh, you know, really go for an attack. He's only a single Hellion ahead. I mean, Blue Flame does help, but it's not that substantial. Cloak Banch is going to be on the way very soon for Avocado, the first one actually heading across the map already. Uh, I mean, there's two Vikings and a Raven, so this isn't going to achieve anything at all. And this is going to kind of suck for Avocado because he's not going to get any real damage done with this. And it's a big investment uh, for Cloak to be finishing very soon. I would I would actually cancel Cloak. Yeah, he does cancel Cloak. Um, it's just a waste of money. And, uh, you know, even by even though he hasn't let it complete, the time he's had that money invested into Cloak, you know, it's been kind of painful for him. Now, this is nice. He's going to get a fair few uh, SCV kills here. Uh, the Vikings going to pick off these this medevac, though. Um, these Hellions will all go down. They're chasing down a couple more SCVs. Nice damage done altogether with nine workers killed. And uh, that will actually bring Avocado to an 11 worker advantage right now, but a third command center finished for uh, Optimus. Third command center on the way for Avocado, not there just yet. He's going into his uh, extra barracks right now, as uh, actually Optimus has a huge advantage in the middle of this map, and all of these Hellions of Avocado get cleaned out. Banshee is in the uh, natural expansion once again, but this one is uh, only going to get five, six kills maybe before going down. It will be six. Actually, I think it was seven right at the end there, so good damage done again, and in fact, this is 34 to 53 SCVs right now, as Optimus looks as though he's going to try and bust through this um, 
these rocks and he might just try and come up here for a for a quick victory as uh, there's honestly not too much here now a tank is on the way out how fast can there's a tank here though for optimus as well how fast can optimus take down this um this kind of uh, these rocks he's actually got the high ground vision here so his uh, tank's going to be able to uh, outrange uh, that tank is in range of the other tank i don't know why the tanks aren't fighting each other tanks tank you need to kill other tank you need to become a probable murderer as uh, the tanks are totally fine now, and uh, ah, it's going to be a Hunter Sinker Missile, two of them, to take down the one tank here now. We have had Hellbats come in for uh, Avocado, but this is going to be pretty much his last hold. Does he have enough? Because Optimus is way up in army supply. He's way up as well in upgrades. He's plus one against zero, zero. Vikings are landing. A ton of SCVs go down, and this is a great counterattack so far from the 80 gaming play to get him started here in game number one, and there just seems to be way too much from the SCVs are going to have to retreat out of this natural expansion. The natural expansion itself may very well because there's Vikings in the sky to keep chasing it down once it's lifted up here. And well, well, well. This has um, been an interesting game. It's been a long time actually since I've seen kind of early game Hellion versus Hellion mech versus mech scenarios. SCVs get over here and they will be able to repair. Maybe no, not quite. Yes, they will. Uh, but not for very long because now Hellions get dropped on top of them. Hellbats get dropped on top of them. And I mean, this command side is just going to start burning down. And what a bunch of trouble Avocado is in. Oh no, SEV is going to get more damage taken on them. And oh, a couple more shots go down. Optimus now 12 workers ahead. Avocado slowly starting to try and break out here. Is he in range of that tank? Just. And uh, he does uh, pick one of those off. So the uh, kind of army at the low, on the low ground here for Optimus looking a bit worn out. But of course he's killed off the natural command center which had flown over here. He's... Um, just got so many units ready to go again, and this is what's moved across the map for me right now. Four tanks. Uh, I guess he doesn't have enough to really push up here just yet. Is he missing something at home or so? I mean, he's 20-ish army supply up, so he should have a lot more than his opponent. And uh, well, I mean, the supply the supply is way ahead for him. He just doesn't seem to have very many uh, help as a tank for him. Um, coming in, maybe going to drop some Hellbats on this initial tank here, and well, there's tank number one going to go down very quickly. Yeah, Optimus not even sieging these uh, front two tanks just yet. In fact, not sieging any tanks, just A moving forward. These uh, Hellbats are going to drop on top of these next two tanks and start dealing the damage over here. Uh, well, Hellion's coming in, and with the tank damage as well, uh, they're going to take down a lot of the tanks of uh, Optimus, but I mean, the Vikings landing is just too much altogether. Another auto turret is here as well, and uh, I mean, these SCVs don't even get to repair and GG is called game number 1 to 80 game and Optimus picks up where he left off in season 2 after his finals against Vegas Squadron he all killed he gets get the kill in game number 1 here to begin with guys we're going to go into quick commercial break because I'm not going to lie I, <laughs> I'm absolutely dying to go get a drink so we'll be right back in a few moments don't go too far game 2 of SD of uh, SC2 improved team league season 3 80 gaming versus Darkstar will be here in just I really get confused Sometimes exploit says my mic is live and then it's not and then like I don't know. Ladies, gentlemen, welcome to SC2 Improved Team League Season 3. We're in the match right now between AT Gaming and Team Dogstar and we're gonna go into game number two right now. As uh, Optimus is taking on Vanta in a TVC for map two Darkstar looking to get back here a little bit in this game and we better go in game because we got a pull first on the way from Vanta. And he's following it up with a gas as well, all without going for the hatchery just yet. So things getting interesting here right at the start. The Teal Zerg player in the lower left-hand corner from Darkstar. Vanta starting things off for the Swedish team here today. In the upper right-hand corner, the Red Terran player from AT Gaming. It's none other than Optimus, a man who uh, has much support in the chat, has many supporters etc 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 how are we all doing in the chat today guys how are we all doing hope you're all doing well hope you're all having a good day we've got devil cry who's um, been reading some manga we've got euphermal who's spreading the optimus hype and there's reaper coming across the map right now and uh, looking to see what it can get done here at the start of this game, as it's uh, heading across, looking to uh, do whatever it can and uh, get a little bit of information, he's going to immediately see here. Um, you know, this was a pool first, and he sees that, and I think immediately he's going to head back home, thinking Lings are out, Lings are on the way across. In fact, we've had no Zerglings at all here, really, from uh, from Vanta. He's actually now pulled out of gas as well, um, just below fifty. So. 
bit of a weird time to pull out gas. He has got Zergling speed already on the way. And this uh, Reaper's kind of realizing, you know, Zergling should be there right now. So what is going on? And decides he better come back across the map to try and get a little bit of scouting information going for himself. He will jump up into the main base here and he's, uh, he is looking to scout and uh, he comes in, he clicks on that gas and he sees how much gas has been mined from him. He may be a bit confused about the number. Uh, he will actually lose the Reaper here, maybe. It should get cut off before it can go around the back. Okay, he's going to loop around and maybe jump back into the main by still thinking it's going to take a hit. And there it goes, disappears in a single jump. That was like a magic trick, the Reaper's like, today I shall jump to the high ground. And you shall not see me when I get there. And he did. He disappeared. Went into absolutely nothing. Uh, Marine's starting to spread out a little bit here for Optimus at the start of this. A couple of uh, Hellions on the way. Tech uh, bar uh, reaction on the barracks as well. Uh oh, it's the Hellbat build. Optimus. He did this a lot in the SE2 Improved Team League Season 2 Finals, and it looks as though he's doing it again. We're going to be a reactor on that starport to get a couple of medevacs out. There's going to be a lot of Hellions slash Hellbats coming across the map here. How much damage is he, is he able to get done for this? I mean. He delays his third command center to do this, he delays as well his uh, engineering base. So, you know, he has to do some kind of damage to make it worthwhile. But the way the build works out, it's almost guaranteed to do damage. So, it's uh, kind of cool, it's very safe against all ins as well. And he follows it up with, I do believe, Banshees, if I uh, can remember correctly. And as we do see, Vanta coming across the map here with a few Zerglings. The speed is finished for him, what will he achieve? Absolutely nothing. Um, Optimus is kind of laughing now. Uh, he just killed off like six Zerglings with his first few Hellions, and that's great for him. A Viking actually on the way here initially, it's actually going to be more Marines out of Optimus for now. Now he actually adds on the Tech Lab, so... Okay, so yeah, it's it's not ex like... This isn't exactly how I remember it. Um, it's been it's actually been a long time since our Season 2 Finals. Um, so this is episode slightly different. We've got the uh, Barracks producing Marines now. We've got hel more Hellions on the way out. We've got... Uh, we are still going to see... Okay, yeah, a Medivac, and we are going to see the Cloak as well. So he is just going to still uh, uh, probably put the Marines into the main base slash natural. Um, most likely going to see that very soon here. So he's going to put the Marines into the main slash natural. He's still going to have a lot of Hellbats coming towards the... Uh, I guess he actually hasn't got an army, right? So he's just going to keep them with Hellions. And this is actually something we asked him about in, after the uh, Season 2 finals. And he said, sometimes I just prefer to mix it up and not always go for the Hellbats. And sometimes just keep them as Hellions instead. Um... You know, it's, it, I, I guess because uh, Vanta here, he's gone for Bane and that's quite early on. If he makes a lot of Banelings, uh, you know, Hellions, which aren't Hellbats, could definitely do very well against them. There's the Armoury, though, as uh, the Medivac is heading towards the main base as well. The tower has been cleaned out, and, uh, well, Vanta's just sitting up here with a ton of Zerglings waiting for the opportunity to pounce, but uh, Optimus isn't going uh, moving forward just yet. As uh, Creep continues to spread out from the natural towards the third base as well here. I um, mean, a medevac coming in towards the main. I'm going to start dropping off and this first queen is in a little bit of trouble. And oh, the Hellions are going to get a little bit surrounded here in a little bit of trouble initially. But a lot of Zerglings going down at the same time in these uh, Marines. There's nothing to answer for them just yet. As these Hellions are still going to be able to come in towards the third base and morph into Hellbats. This is very troublesome as their uh, overalls are now starting to fall as well here. An Overseer maybe too. Yes, it will. And... This is uh, really kind of horrible right now as uh, drones are coming back, but they can't really get into these links, can't really get into a position to fight them. Uh, Medivac picks up all of these Marines. Hellbats now coming in towards this third base, and this is a scary force to fight as well for Vanta right now. As uh, this Medivac, where's it gone? Is it just going towards the natural? Is it coming to join the Hellbats? I can't actually see it. As uh, the links try and come in for a surround, they will clean this up eventually. But has not traded well against this at all. At the start of this, so not the best of trades at all. Marines coming back into the main base and dropping now. We have one one on the way for our ten place. So he is behind them upgrades. We've got a banshee follow up to this as well. This cloak banshee hits the third base right now, and uh, Vanta is continuing to take drone damage. He's now falling behind in SCVs. He is um, actually supply blocked as well on sixty nine out of seventy, and that's even with uh, losing drones to make spore crawlers. So. With 8 kills on this Banshee, it's just going to turn around, and this has been such a great opening from Optimus. It's done a lot of damage. He's got his barracks on the way up now, so he's going to go into the mid-game in a very uh, strong manner. Um, I mean, it looks as though Vanta may try and counter-attack, and he may try and just go for a Bane and Bust. And that's definitely a possibility here. Um, he may just try and hit the wall with just Zerglings, but I think if you try to Bane and Bust, he has the potential to do something, because there's not that much on the ground. And a single Banshee is going to take a very long time to clean up all of these Zerglings, so... I feel like as though there's an opportunity for that here, but Vant is not going to risk it. He's just going to uh, start up his spire, start up his two-two, and uh, take up, take down, you know, take his extra, uh, you know, his couple of advantages that he does have. 
in this game, which is that faster 2-2, the faster upgrades here, um, because of how Optimus has had to delay at the start of this. Uh, nice though, I like this, the Banshee's delayed, denying some of this creep spread. Um, I remember the first time we saw Banshees coming out of Terran players and TVZ, um, like in the early game, and uh, it was kind of like the GSTL finals, I think. And if it was, was it not like Star Tail versus Prime, and it was like Maru versus like July's, and it was like around that kind of time. And, um, you know, we had the Ravens and the Banshees coming out, and they did such a great job, always moving around the map, picking off uh, creep tumors and stuff, and it was always it was such a great thing to see. Uh, wow, that was a long time ago, right? That, that was like the GSTL finals. Was that the one at IPL? I think it must have been as Optimus continues down on over factory. A couple more barracks here. Um, combat shield starts up. Going to clean out this uh, Zerg and just drop his own third base. He's uh, I mean, these Banshees have just done so much. They've cl cleared all of his map control. There's only one active tumor on the map. They've got, what, 13 and 8, 21 kills between them. This um, this Banshee duo has done so, so well here. As um, Optimus is actually moving out with his 1-1. He's saying, come on, let's, uh, let's take a fight, man. Let's, uh, let's do this. Uh, these Banners, do they have uh, Banner speed? Yes, they do. So, Sentinel Fugal Hooks has finished. Two twos on the way, but mm, it's a minute away, and it looks as though Optimus may attack before then. He's going to see this fourth base. This is going to be a dead fourth base. Um, no doubt about this. So, fourth base is going to go down here uh, very quickly. Drone goes down also. And op I mean, Vanta can't really do too much about this at all. He's 20 supply behind right now. His first Mutalisk is on the way out. Again, he really has to just rely on these uh, upgrade this upgrade advantage for himself here. As I hope, begins to move forward, and without combat shields, maybe this is his best opportunity, but wow, he just picks up and goes, and that was a really weird mine shot. I think the mines just killed themselves. I'm not actually too sure here. Um, Marine's sitting over here, so these banshees aren't going to get chased down. The mine's cleared up, but Optimus, I think, overall, is a pretty good trade for him. There's 30 more lings on the way, 7 more banners from our Zerg player. Um, nice wall here, I like this. Going to stop any kind of run by in towards that third base. And um, I mean, still, as a Terran player here, looking as though he might just move forward and continue trying to push. And there's still not that many banners, really. Um, as long as Optimus has a decent ish split, he should be alright here. And he has actually run into this within, in a pre split. Uh, coming forward with a couple of Banshees to lead the way, he's going to try and uh, maybe take down the... Uh, he's going to get the Queen first, is he going to get the Queen? He will just get it. And uh, the Medivacs... Uh, the, sorry, the Banshees picked off by the Musilisks now. I mean, Optimus just has so much when you look back at home. 40 supply altogether right now. As it begins, as this army begins just to cross the map. Uh, Mutalisks all kind of grouping up together here. Uh, creep Tumor uh, killed off, and I think that was the last active Creep Tumor actually on the map. Uh, Vanta, because of losing so many queens, just hasn't seemed to have a chance to kind of remake any of these. And, uh, well, now he's just going to have to make one big, strong defense here. Again, he has 2-2 two -two against 1-1, one -one, which is definitely an advantage. And he's going to come in with a pretty okay-ish concave. Uh, the mines do burrow, and they don't really get any hits off. It's pretty much pure bailing from now on, though, and this army that's confining behind is kind of the sick thing because they're just going to turn around. Oh, no! But more bailing, so it's kind of a surround in the end. Marine, uh, Medifax picking up here. Some of these Marines are dropping out. Vanta takes a great fight, and he actually evens up the supplies. Is there enough here for Optimus? Well, okay, I think there is because there's not that many Zerglings, right? So as the Banelings fall, the, there's not really that much here at all for his airplane. and he moves forward here at the speed of light, really looking for an opportunity. Two twos about to come in. Oh no, the Mutalisks are going to fly into a load of mines. How did only one of them go off? I'm not too sure that Mutalisks, I feel very lucky to be alive at this moment as uh, Vanta still in a very aggressive position. Single dropship heading out on the map for Optimus here. Uh, the supply is closer than they've been all game long. But... But now our Terran player has um, caught up in terms of um, has caught up in terms of upgrades, and that will definitely help him in the fights. As uh, this wall actually starting to be picked off a little bit, uh, two, three depots maybe going down altogether here. Uh, but getting turned away at the same time. Fourth base is up for Vanta, but not for very long because this drop is coming across, and there's nothing in position just yet to really deal with it. I'm gonna rebuild this uh, wall and. Just getting it right there. So Optimus re-walling right now. Ooh, his fourth command center in a little bit of trouble. He's not really thought about this. He's taking down the rocks. He should be able to get here in time to defend. Ah, these marines are hotkeyed incorrectly. And now they're coming uh, across the map instead of uh, continuing to drop. And, uh, well, how is this uh, defense going to be here? The mines aren't really seeming to go off at all. There's enough bio left over to uh, push these mutalisks back. Fourth command center falls, though. And this drops a little bit sad because it was in a great position to do damage in the bottom right. But, um... But yeah, I mean, he kind of messed it up in all honesty. He really shouldn't have. He, he had, he still had the Marines in the Medivac hotkeyed. So when he was, uh, you know, trying to get all of his army to come across here, he was aiming moving with everything. That way, he hit F2 and tried to, uh, you know, bring everything anyway and just forgot he had a drop out on the map. 
I have first few marines coming forward here, gonna trade against these muralists, and muralists have to be very careful, 22 balins about to complete, question is how close are they to the space, a few of them are here, but again, only a few of them, as uh, Optimus is gonna sit right now in this position, and uh, well, it looks as though he doesn't really have all too much here in this location, he has to be very careful of his uh, medevacs, uh, these muralists will clean them up if he isn't careful, and he will get turned away once again. Plus three weapons now on the way for him. Is there reinforcements coming across the map again? Is he got enough to defend? It? Uh, yeah, okay, I think he does again. There's never kind of an overwhelming amount of units left over after one of these fights. And oh, he's going to sneak around here. This is actually really scary on both sides because fourth base will fall for the Zerg. But the Terran might take some serious damage at his third at the same time. Uh, units going to start saving through here. Will it make Vanta turn around or what will he go for? Immediately targeting down this uh, base. And well, what's he going to get with the uh, mine? Just Mutalisks. This uh, third command center is going to take a lot of damage. Uh, Mutalisks uh, Mut coming in and uh, taking down the turrets almost immediately. The whole SCV line is cleared up. Uh, there's a few marines left in defense here, but oh, they're not split up at all, so the Bailens are going to get some good shots off on them. A single four here is not going to last too long either. Fourth base has fallen though, down on this side, and maybe a third base dead as well for the Zerg. Uh, this is turning into a complete base trade right now. Uh, Optimus, though, I think he's in an okay position because there's only muters left over here. I think he's okay, and he's going to take down the third base of his opponent. Uh, Vanta now may be the one who's in a bit too much of tr trouble, as uh, his third base will now fall. I mean, this third command star still lives for Optimus, so he can just rebuild from this. You know, he can rebuild his SCVs that he's lost. He can recover. I'm not sure if Vanta really can. He's uh, only got a handful of Balins moving in. Six Balins in total is not really enough, in all honesty. As Optimus is uh, going to move back across the map here, Marauder going to be hitting down on this hatchery, and, uh, well, the mine goes off, and don't actually really think it got too much here, but, I mean, Optimus just groups up with his army. He's just going to go again. He's 30 army supply up, and, of course, he probably doesn't know that, but he may feel it. And his mines, but they're going to get a single shot off the mutant. His Banelins aren't even really Banelins in this situation. They're just, uh, you know, they're just uh, target practice for these marines and splitting practice for Optimus. Mears is just going to go back, and uh, this fourth base... Uh, which is trying to be established, will go down, looks like a couple of banners came in from the side, in Co-Optimus, a little bit off guard, but Vanta below 100 supply, GG's out, and that will be game number two in favour of AT Gaming, and AT Gaming, the, again, Optimus, he is not quitting early, and he is going the distance already in the first match of the season, and I feel uh, Darkstar in a little bit of trouble here after two games, 2-0 down, not the way they would have wanted to be starting. They, you know, last season they were always the team who were pushing. They were really looking to be the team who were causing upsets, who were taking maps where you don't expect them to take maps. And I mean, you have to put them as the as the underdogs against AT Game and last season's champions. Yes, but I mean, I think uh, between Avocado and Vanta, they were at least hoping for at least one map to be taken. And well, now the O2 down, we'll see what they can do in game number three. We'll see who they'll send out next. Um, after a few moments, guys, we're going to go into a quick commercial break. If you're enjoying the show, hit the follow button. And we'll be back here in three minutes' time with game number three of Dark Star vs. AT. Hello, guys, and welcome back to SC2 Improved Team League Season 3. We're watching AT Gaming vs. Team Dark Star here as AT Gaming currently hold a 2 0 lead against their opponents. As Optimus is again just not stopping here in SC2 ITL. The last we saw him, he was all killing in the uh, grand finals of Season 2. Um, he's just on an absolute roll right now. I'm actually, um, wondering when the last time he lost was. Did he lose in the, um, playoffs? He, uh, no, he didn't lose in the playoffs at all. So, he hasn't lost since he didn't play in the semi-finals, and he only played one match in the round of eight, but he won that. So he hasn't been defeated in, like, forever, basically. So Optimus is having a crazy run here in the SC2 ITL, and now in the new season it continues as well. Guys, how are you all doing? Who are you cheering for today? We're going into our game right now. In the lower left-hand corner, the blue Terran player from AT Gaming. It's Optimus. It's taken two maps so far. Now going to be tested against a Protoss player. In the upper left-hand corner, it's the pink Protoss from Team Darkstar. It's loser. All right, so. Let's see what's going to happen here in game number three as we actually have a command center first here for Optimus. Dead Ring, a pretty nice map to do this on, of course. I mean, it's a very large map. 
Uh, even if you spawn vertically, as has has happened here, I mean, it's it's a pretty large map altogether. Mothership core on the way. It's just a single gas expand out of loser, a player who I actually don't really know much about, if I'm going to be honest. I don't know much about him at all here. Um... I, he's one of the Dark Star players who I've actually never really seen play before. I'm actually going to try and find out something about him on Liquipedia quickly as the SCV gets turned away by the Mothership Core. Um, is it one of the... is it? I'm confused. Maybe yes. Yeah, so I'll... Maybe it... I, I don't know if it's just someone renamed or if it's genuinely a... Uh, or if it's just genuinely a new player for them. Um... Because I've not seen him before, and I've casted a lot of Dark Star games. As uh, I'm, 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 I'm really intrigued to find out. Um, but our Dark Star manager does not seem to be paying attention, uh, sadly. Alright, so anyways. Uh, what's happening in this game? A box facility on the way down for loser here. Uh, pink Protoss player. And um, let's see what you can do as uh, he's brought to another from Overship Core. I mean, it's just a pretty standard opening, right? The robotics facility already on the way down. Over here for Optimus, he's uh, on free barracks. He's gone into double gas as well. So, I mean, all's kind of, uh, you know, all's good right here. 480 Gaming. As uh, Optimus comes all the way back into this natural. Optimus, just uh, going to move a single marine to the middle of the map. A few more marines on the way out, so looking as though he wants to move across here. I don't really like this push out without a marauder. Now, there's, you know, obviously his own tech labs only just finished, so it would be delay this push quite a bit not to have a marauder, but I feel if only eight, nine marines, these two stalkers can really actually just take a fight against these. Like, and even if they, you know, they can just chase them back so, so far, I don't even think he really needs to use Fort and Overcharge. Um, you know, if he actually time warped them, I reckon he could probably take it on with the two stalkers. Um, let's see what he decides to do. He probably will just drop the phone over charge just to be safe. Now, uh, these stalkers not actually being paid attention. Well, you definitely can't take them on with just two stalkers if you're just going to do that. Um, this phone over charge helping out quite a bit here as uh, these units do get in towards the main base. Now, just a single stalker to help out. There's another stalker warping in. And it's going to be chased away. A probe's being pulled here. Uh, I think there's maybe a bit of an overreaction in all honesty. I mean... This is like, this is a huge amount of workers to not have mining. Um, when you've got stalkers which are going to clean up anyway, I thought that was a bit of an overreaction there for loser in all honesty, but, um, but yeah, so. This, uh, Fort Overcharge going to be, uh, spinning away here. This Nexus has a powerful long-ranged attack, that's one way to phrase it. Third command center already on the way for Optimus. I mean, he's just confident right now in this game. Going to get his third command center up immediately here. A couple of turrets coming in place. Uh, first Colossus on the way with extended thermal lance. No forges just yet. And uh, I was actually watching Meta earlier, and they were uh, talking about discussing how uh, no forge play in PV in Z uh, sorry in PVT has become uh, more and more um, popular uh, recently. Let's see how it works out for Loser. Is, uh, I mean, he's literally on the gate in a Robo Bay and a Robo facility right now. Combat shields on the way. And uh, plus one attack. We finally get an answer from Silver. So, loser is just a new player. <laughs> and um, a couple of Stargates on the way for loser actually right now. So, this is intriguing. This, this is just, gonna, I guess, it's going to have to be Phoenix Colossus um, composition. I mean, what else are you going to do with two Stargates? Um, just build up the Phoenix count very, very quickly, I imagine. Um, I feel Optimus is in such a great position to kind of deal with this, though. I mean, fast forward command center. You know, the economy he can get out of this, I mean, losing us, the economy he can get out of this, I'm pretty sure he can just spam out enough units to not actually care and to just probably A, move in towards this army. Like, because he's going to be completely untouched in the early stages of this game. A double drop right now. Doing a little here, and he's actually going to go for the robot. If he can get this before uh, extended thermal lance finishes, that is such a huge pick off, and he's just going to go for it. It's too low right now to give up on. Now uh, he loses what half a medevac of units, and that's an absolutely great pick off here. Forced to rebuild extended thermal lance, not in this game for a long time now, 
And that is very, very painful. The Phoenix. I mean, this is why if you want to go Phoenix Colossus, you generally open with an Oracle. Because then you can get the Phoenix out nice and quickly. And then you've got no problem dealing with these initial uh, Metavacs with, with dealing with drops at all. You can see he's just not got enough units to deal with drops. Um, unless he uh, stops them before they even get into his base. So, it's a little bit of a scary prospect to see him... Going back in, he, well, a little bit of a scary prospect to see him dealing with it the way he is. And, well, these Phoenix are uh, now revealed. He's uh, at the third base as well. But he's going to have to pick up here pretty quickly. Again, three Colossus will take that down pretty fast. But we'll say weapons level one on the way. Uh, first Phoenix actually taking a little bit of damage here. And there's Optimus going to sit over to this side. A pylon coming up over here. Probably just to watch for drops coming towards the natural from the east. And there's um, Loser just... Uh, just chilling right now. I mean, he's just going to be playing a defensive style for at least the next uh, little while. Second uh, starport already on the way up, though, or already finished for Optimus. He's already producing a fair amount of Vikings. As long as he doesn't lose these Metavacs, he's going to be in a pretty nice spot because he's going to be able to just mass up Vikings. He's even getting some ghosts in, which, uh, if he can get the shields off of this army, I mean, it's going to be even even weaker. Um, it's kind of scary, like, the, the push he's building up towards, he's going to have upgrades as well, he's got plus one, I guess he's not actually continued with his upgrades, he's stopped on just plus one attack, um, so he could he could be taking a further upgrade lead, but right now he isn't, I wonder if he just SCV pulls or whether he just keeps going, um, or if he just kind of plays the macro game, because, I mean, he does have this third uh, base, but no further upgrades, can't, does suggest a little bit to me, at least, that he is thinking of at least some kind of, um, SCV pulling. Is this it? Is this the boys? Okay, yes it is. There's the three ghosts and here come the boys. Optimus pulling the SCVs and he's got a 40, 50 nearly army supply lead plus one. He's not finished for another minute for our Protoss player. His army is all the way in the back here and I just don't know if it's going to be enough. He's got so much of this army in these Phoenix as well which aren't really going to add all too much in this fight. Uh, I mean, the EMPs as well are going to make them almost useless, apart from for taking down Vikings. The first EMP goes off, doesn't really hit all too much. Where's the next EMP is going to come down? He's not actually landing any of them just yet. Vikings chasing down Colossus. A Colossus coming in from the side. That has to be very careful. Vikings are going to go for that one now as well. And, well, loser just loses absolutely everything. And Optimus is absolutely unstoppable right now. Darkstar are going to be 3-0 down. They're going to have to bring out their ace player. In, what, less than 50 minutes? In 50 minutes, Optimus has forced four players out of Team Darkstar. And, uh, well, what can I say? Ace match. Well, not ace match, but uh, match point. For AT Gaming now, they're free or up. The opportunity to go for an all-kill here. Optimus just looking like he is absolutely on form the past... Um, just... just Recently in general, I mean, it's just like last month or so, in the last couple of weeks, I think, he made his first go for SC2 final. This guy is on the up and up and up. And AT Gaming, in Season 1, known for kind of relying a lot on U-Thermal to take them places. In Season 2, they proved themselves a little bit more, so in Season 3, they have, you know, they've come with a message. We're the champions. We're defending our title. This was a really, really good start. Guys, we're going into game number 4 after a quick commercial break. Don't go too far. If you enjoy the show, you can uh, hit the follow button on Twitch, or you can check out our Twitter at se 2 underscore improve. If you really want to support us even further, we're gonna uh, you can subscribe to the channel as well, and you get a bunch of benefits, replay packs. Um, I don't know what else there is. I've written it all down somewhere. You can type exclamation mark subscribe, and you will get to see it. So, guys, we'll be back in a few minutes with game number four of 80 Game vs. Darkstar. Don't go too far. We'll be back as soon as we can. Right now, and everything is online for Team Darkstar as they try to hold their dignity in the first match of their season, but, um, well, Optimus just seems to be doing way too good. It's going to be another Paros player. It's going to be Multi coming out of Team Darkstar. Let's see. If he can make the magic happen, if he can take down the all-kill machine... On the uh, south side of the map, it's the green cross player, Darkstar's multi. Man, I have really bad memories of him on this map. Um, it was something like he was spawned in this location. I'm sure it was multi. I'm 99% I'm sure it was him. And he was playing another Pros, and there was a proxy Stargate over here. And he was coming across, and he was about to spot it with his mothership core. And his vision was like, like, say this line was like the edge of the Stargate. His vision line was like here and here and here. And it got to him and it's like, he spotted the star. I was like, even kind of down, it's like, three, two, one. And it got to here and he was about to see the Stargate. And his mothership core turned around and started going in the other direction. I was like, no. It was like, it was, it was kind of like awkwardly perfect because I was like counting down like, three, two, one, he sees it. And then he just turned away and it was like, no, no, God. More painful match that was for Multi. 
who um, then went on to lose the game uh, shortly afterwards. Ah, oh, I I feel I felt his pain then. Uh, so we do have multi here on the bottom side of this map. We know who he is in the top right. It is Optimus in the upper right hand corner. You know what? I probably still have Optimus's stats here. Is this Optimus? Yeah, look at that. This was Optimus uh, before we. Uh, this was Optimus, uh, his uh, little kind of team card at the Season 2 Finals. Um, you know, obviously the information pretty much out of date. So then, you know, this was his stats going into it, and then he all killed, and everyone was like, Optimus, the new Pope of SC2ITL. Still got that uh, on one of my tabs on my uh, X Split. <laughs> Still got it set up as the AT tab. Because there's uh, been nothing too important just uh, lately to actually have to use that for, so. Anyways, um, Optimus heading across the map here with this Reaper. We'll be able to see the fairly quick expansion from his opponent. Second gas only just on the way, so uh, nothing too quick uh, in terms of tech from his opponent just yet. Optimus is uh, just going to go around the map uh, with an SCV factory. Uh, sorry, second barracks on the way and a react on the first. And uh, looking as though he might head in towards the factory sometime soon as well. As um, this Reaper has been in the main base, seen absolutely nothing of interest. And we'll just head out of there for now. As, uh, I guess he saw the expansion, he saw the natural. Um... So yeah, I guess he saw something. He's seen no uh, proxies with this SCV. So he's just uh, heading back and um, yeah, going to head back inside his main base. The uh, natural does finish up here, so Optimus is going to be able to start up his orbital command on the natural. And uh, robotics facility just on the way for our pros play. So a very similar opening to game number three we just saw where losers, I mean he opened in pretty much exactly the same way. Same type of expand, same timing of the robotics facility. And uh, probably just going to allow him to get a lot of observers out to go into Colossus fairly quickly. And uh, we'll see what else happens from there on out as this Reaper going to move around, going to uh, come. And uh, just keep looking, keep looking everywhere. You can look, if you look at the vision of uh, Optimus, he's actually checked every position on the map. He's checked pretty much every position on the map apart from this very left side and he hasn't actually been on the watchtower. So he has been, you know, super active with this Reaper and in initial SEV, really checking everywhere to make sure he's not... Uh, being tricked out of anything, you know, he's not being uh, caught off guard at all, and uh, he's not going to kind of take a loss for no reason because he didn't scout something. Into the main base he comes, he sees the robo bay and the robo facilities, I mean, that's pretty much the perfect scout once again here. Is this Reaper really going to get away? No, the Stalker will cut it off, and the uh, Reaper goes down. Part of him falls down this cliff, never to be seen again, the rest of it will be swept away by uh, invisible Protoss uh, cleaners. Keep the base tidy. Tidy base is a happy base. There's Multi here, just um, waiting for his Colossus to start up in the production tab. Stim on the way, Medivac's going to be on the way out pretty quickly here from Optimus. I mean, with these two barracks, uh, you know, you get the factory out so much faster because you don't commit to a third racks. Get your gases faster, and that means the Medivacs come out faster too. So it's going to be kind of like an 18 Marine drop from Optimus into the main base of his opponent um, in the very near future. Single Marauder on the way out, extended from the land starts as well for Multi here, and uh, Optimus... Playing now this out a little bit differently than he did in that last game. Of course, last game he started command center first. He went into three barracks before his gas. There was, um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of differences compared to this game. Although in the end, they will end up in fairly similar positions. Um, this is the perfect number of units. 14 marines and a single marauder will completely fill these two medivacs, and they will head straight across the map right now. But straight into the path of an observer. So multi sees this, and uh, he should have seen this if he was paying attention to his observer. You'll know this is on the way across four gateways being added on here. I mean, this is just his first extra gateway, so he's only just now going up to, uh, you know, past the first gateway in this game. He's fairly unprotected in his main base, I and mean, he's going to have a full overcharge if he would like. Uh, this is completely unspotted. Now he sees it, and oh, Optimus is just going to be able to stim forward here. Stim's not actually done. Uh, now, now Stim is finished, and this Colossus might be in trouble. He can take down the Marines very quickly, but the Colossus falls, and the Stalkers fall, the Mothership Call falls, and uh, there's no full overcharge, and... Um, another Colossus is not going to get out here because the Rover facility will fall and I think Optimus literally may have just won the series. Um, I mean, Stalker's fallen okay, so he's going to be able to hold on here, but I mean, the damage he has done is kind of game-ending damage because now there's no splash damage for at least another 2-3 minutes. You know how long that is to be able to keep just producing pure medevac and pure bio? He's going to power up so hard, and I mean, he's only on two barracks, yes, but he's adding on barracks three, four, and five now. And again, the closest on going first, closest isn't going to be out for absolutely ages. The robo facility isn't even finished rebuilding yet, it's only not even halfway done. A probe gets caught on the way out on the map, there's four medevacs now. Combat shields is on the way, plus one is on the way, 
And this was a very painful start. I mean, the Mothership Core doesn't even have um, energy anymore before uh, for an overcharge because he lost it. He had to rebuild it. So Stork is uh, four power is going to go down. Now he's actually just kiting against Zealots. Nice couple of warp ins here. Uh, kind of block the um, units a little bit. I mean, with this many Vandivacs in the sky, he's lost one of them. And he's very close to losing another. Does just pick up here and actually just drops on the low ground. I mean, he's just trading so well. What's the resources loss looking like? 2.5k to 1k. Anything Optimus seems to do right now just seems to be the correct decision, right? Like, there just seems to be absolutely no stopping him. He's got a bunch of users over here. I'm surprised he hasn't been making more Medivacs. And I, I, if I was him, I feel like I would have gone up to six Medivacs at least. Um, maybe even eight, because it's just going to be so long until Colossus are even kind of an issue for him. I mean, he's got two Vikings on the way before the first Colossus, which is going to be on this map again, is even starting to be built. So, I mean, this is absolutely crazy right now. Optimus uh, just moving all the way over here. I may just try and pick up and drop his uh, food command center has landed for him as well. I mean, he's just he's just on solid. I mean, work accounts are fairly even actually, in all honesty. Um, but I mean, with five barracks up and again only one cross is out at the 12 minute mark, you've got to wonder what's the hopes here for multi because this army starts to move across the map again. Um, you know, his army's primarily zealots, and a single Colossus is mm, probably not going to cut it. He's got a second one queued up. He's got no range on it though. And uh, Optimus just meets up with everything in the middle. Does he attack or does he wait? It looks like he might just wait this one out for a little while. Um, I mean, he's just sorted a plus one arm. He's got more medivacs on the way again. Uh, so he might just try and some do some light pressure, try and maybe drop into the main base a bit and uh, pick up and leave. And uh, try this along. We've got Forge trying to come up for multi, so he's trying to get into some kind of upgrades here. As this game goes on, he's going to stim forward here. Yeah, Optimus looking to catch a few stalkers and he catches one and does he catch another? Not quite. First force field goes down, but doesn't achieve too much. This uh, factory coming back. Very lucky not to lose more of them stalkers. Two of them, or just a couple of hits away from death. And these medivacs are going to start healing up here. Third base mining for our Terran player. And Probe over here, not yet able. Oh, multi just GG's. Oh, what? Really? I didn't miss anything. He just straight up GG's. Doesn't feel as though he can do it. Wow, that was um, extreme anticlimactic. Like, really anticlimactic. <laughs> and just like that, it's a 4 0. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, that caught me a little bit off guard. Um, actually, I'm not going to lie, all that ca caught me very off guard. Um, wow. Optimus, what more can you say? Spam your Optimuses, raise your Optimuses. Um, to go into the finals against Vegas Squad, where AT Gaming were probably the underdogs, and him to be the first player out, no one expected him to really do that. You know, they expected him to take a map, maybe two. But no one expected them to take him to all kill. To do that and then to come into this next season and to prove it wasn't just a fluke and to just straight up all kill again. And in the fashion he did it in, like not a single one of them games, probably his game against Vanta was the closest, right? It looked a little bit close when, um, I guess against Avocado, he was behind in SCVs. But as soon as he was moving across the map, you were like, right, he's going to do some serious damage. He's so far ahead in army. Against Vanta, he was really far ahead. He took a couple bad fights. But... He, he was still in it. That was probably the closest series he saw because then the two TVPs were just absolutely, you know, he just completely killed his opponents. It wasn't even close. So Optimus looking fantastic here in AT game. And I cannot wait to see how they do this season now. Like, you know, you know, they were, yes, they're last season's champions. Yes, they're probably one of the favorite teams. But, you know, they're one of them teams where, you know, a couple of bad games, a couple of bad maps, someone loses to a cheese and all of a sudden you may see them losing to a team you wouldn't expect them to lose, you know. Um, but no, I mean, Optimus comes out, he all kills, and boom, 4-0, and what a start to the season for them. I'm really intrigued to see how uh, how it continues for the next week. AT Gaming go up against um, Red Bloods. That'll actually be a pretty sick series, because Red Bloods are a pretty nice team. Pretty, uh, you know, pretty close-knit, but a uh, pretty strong team nonetheless. And uh, Darkstar will go up against Punchline for an opportunity to try and redeem themselves after this 0-4 uh, disaster start for them. Here in week one of the SC2 ITL season 3. Guys, we're going to go. Uh, thank you for tuning in.
if uh, you want to check out any VODs or anything out of YouTube, it's at youtube.com forward slash sc 2 improve If you want to read more about our stream schedule, I urge you to check out sc2improve.net. Uh, give me a moment here, guys. So, sc2improve.net. Uh, click on sc2itleu season three week one begins. You can read about uh, you know the weeks and uh, actually our full stream schedule is down here right now. So tomorrow, no, that's today. Uh, tomorrow, uh, I actually think we're going to cast Vegas Squadron versus Skillforge, and we're going to take the replays of Mind Sanity versus ET Visualize to probably cast afterwards. And on Thursday, we're going to try and find a match still. But on Friday, if things get serious. Star Tail take the stage. And begin their season three SE2 ITL campaign as they take on Team Mistral, a team who came from Division Two, from season two. So, you know, Startail going to make their first uh, their debut in SE2 ITL on Friday. Three hours after that, it's not written here, but we'll have Carnage Esports against Team Extreme Supremacy as well. So, a bunch of matches coming your way this week, guys. Make sure to hit the follow button so you can see when we go live. If all of them don't miss any SE2 ITL action, and uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well so you can get all of the replay packs. And everything as well. So, we'll be back here. Um, I'm actually going to ladder a bit. I'm going to stream my ladder. So, I'm going to just run some ads on the outro. Uh, if you guys are done and you're gone, then thank you for watching. If you want to watch me fail in some Diamond League Terran ladder, then uh, feel free to stick around and watch me play. Hopefully, did I just have my Skype up on screen? No, I had something else up. Guys, thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you all. Uh, next time or in a few minutes if you're going to stick around. Thanks for watching.